resection of talocalcaneal tarsal coalition and fat autograft interposition. The indication is very important. Pitfalls. Poor results are associated with resection of talocalcaneal coalitions that involve greater than 50% of the subtalar articular surface, and patient with severe hind foot valgus. The presence of degenerative changes within the subtalar joint is a relative contraindication to resection of talocalcaneal coalitions. Treatment Options A trial of non-operative treatment is indicated in all patients with a painful tarsal coalition. Non-operative treatment includes activity modification, anti-inflammatory medication, and immobilization in a short leg walking cast for 4 to 6 weeks. Asymptomatic coalitions do not require treatment. Interposition of a portion of the flexor hallucis longus tendon may substitute for fat autograft interposition in talocalcaneal coalitions. Indications a persistently painful coalition that is not responsive to non-operative treatments such as activity modification, anti-inflammatory medication, or immobilization in a short leg walking cast for 4-6 to six weeks. Examination and Imaging Gait The patient is observed for an antalgic gait, characterized by a decreased stance phase on the affected extremity, and the position of the foot during stance phase is evaluated. Patients will often present with an out-towing gait. Alignment. Hind foot and midfoot alignment is examined. Patients with a tarsal coalition will typically present with hind foot valgus and abduction across the midfoot. The patient is evaluated for flattening of the medial longitudinal arch. A single leg heel rise will assess the flexibility of the flat foot deformity. Failure to reconstitute the arch of the foot is indicative of a rigid hind foot and suggests the presence of some abnormality within the subtalar or transverse tarsal joints, such as a tarsal coalition. Palpation. Point tenderness may be elicited plantar to the medial malleolus in the region of the sustentaculum tali. Examination and imaging. Range of motion. The hind foot is inverted and diverted while stabilizing the ankle joint and compared to the contralateral side. Tarsal coalitions are associated with pain and limitation of subtalar motion. Radiographs. Ontero-posterior, AP, lateral, and oblique views of the foot are obtained. The lateral view of the foot, figure, is evaluated for a continuous C-shaped line between the posterior aspect of the talidome and the posterior facet of the subtalar joint C sign. A Harris axial view may demonstrate a middle facet talocalcaneal coalition, although commonly a computed tomography CT, scan is necessary to adequately identify it. Examination and Imaging Standing AP, lateral, and Saltzman hind foot alignment views may be used to assess alignment. A Saltzman view can be useful to quantify hind foot valgus. A CT scan is necessary to better visualize a suspected talocalcaneal coalition, and determine the portion of the subtalar joint that is involved. The coronal images are the best for examining the subtalar joint. Magnetic resonance imaging may be helpful in cases in which the diagnosis is equivocal and a cartilaginous or fibrous coalition is present. Figure Pearls Make the incision long enough to adequately visualize the subtalar joint. Prior to resecting the coalition, be sure to identify the anterior, middle, and posterior facets of the subtalar joint. Pitfalls To prevent wound complications, do not undermine the tissue during the approach. Surgical anatomy. Coalitions may form as a result of failure of segmentation of the individual tarsal bones during fetal development. Talocalcaneal coalitions occur within the subtalar joint, commonly affecting the middle facet. The size of a talocalcaneal coalition is described with respect to the percentage of the subtalar joint that is coalesced. Coalitions may be osseous, cartilaginous, or fibrous. Positioning. The patient is placed supine on a radiolucent operating room table. The leg is allowed to assume an externally rotated position so that the medial aspect of the hind foot is easily accessible. A small bump may be placed on the contralateral hip to facilitate this position. A non-sterile tourniquet may be placed on the upper thigh. Pearls. Pay close attention to the preoperative CT scan to estimate how far lateral to go in the resection of the talocalcaneal coalition. Pitfalls. 
During resection of the talocalcaneal coalition, pay careful attention to the level of the resection to avoid resecting bone from the body of the talus and calcaneus. A horizontal incision is made along the medial aspect of the hind foot centered over the sustentaculum tali. It should start at the anterior margin of the Achilles tendon and extend distally to the navicular tuberosity. Figure. The skin and subcutaneous tissue are incised sharply. The posterior tibial tendon and the flexor digitorum longus FDL tendon are identified dorsally. The sheath of the FDL is opened along the length of the incision. Figure. The neurovascular bundle is identified posterior to the FDL tendon and the Achilles tendon at the most proximal aspect of the incision. A horizontal incision is made along the medial aspect of the hind foot centered over the sustentaculum tali. It should start at the anterior margin of the Achilles tendon and extend distally to the navicular tuberosity. Figure. The skin and subcutaneous tissue are incised sharply. The posterior tibial tendon and the flexor digitorum longus FDL tendon are identified dorsally. The sheath of the FDL is opened along the length of the incision. Figure. The neurovascular bundle is identified posterior to the FDL tendon, and the Achilles tendon at the most proximal aspect of the incision. The FDL tendon is retracted plantarly and the sustentaculum tali palpated. Figure. The coalition lies dorsal to the sustentaculum tali and deep to the medial portion of the sheath of the FDL tendon. The medial portion of the FDL tendon sheath and the underlying periosteum are incised at a point dorsal to the prominence of the sustentaculum tali. Figure. This layer is developed so that it may be used later for closure. The normal cartilage of the subtalar joint is identified, and the boundaries of the coalition are visualized. The FDL is retracted plantarly. Identification of the flexor hallucis longus posteriorly can help with identification of the posterior facet of the subtalar joint. Figure. Figure shows the placement of needles where the native subtalar joint has been identified adjacent to the coalition. With the use of a high speed bearer, wrongers, and curettes, the coalition that lies within the areas of normal articular cartilage is resected. Figure. The surgeon should resect from known to unknown areas to remain in the correct plane for resection of the coalition. Resection is continued until normal articular cartilage is encountered deep within the wound. Figure shows a resected talocalcaneal coalition. Once the coalition has been resected, the foot is inverted and diverted to assure there is supple motion through the joint. A thin layer of bone wax is applied over the area of resection to minimize bleeding and theoretically decrease the risk of recurrence of the coalition. Pearls. Care must be taken to assure that an adequately sized fat graft is obtained for interposition. Fat autograft interposition, preferred technique the neurovascular bundle is retracted anteriorly to expose the retrocalcaneal fat pad. Figure. A piece of fat 1 cm in diameter is excised from the area and placed within the area of the excised coalition, figure. FHL tendon interposition. The FHL tendon sheath is opened inferior to the sustentaculum tali. The tendon of the FHL is split longitudinally, and the superior half of the tendon is placed in the coalition site. The interphalangeal joint of the great toe is taken through a range of motion to assure that motion of the great toe is not restricted. If there is restricted motion, a longer split is created within the FHL tendon, and the interphalangeal joint is re-examined distally. Fat autograft interposition, preferred technique the neurovascular bundle is retracted anteriorly to expose the retrocalcaneal fat pad. Figure. A piece of fat 1 cm in diameter is excised from the area and placed within the area of the excised coalition, figure. FHL tendon interposition. The FHL tendon sheath is opened inferior to the sustentaculum tali. The tendon of the FHL is split longitudinally, and the superior half of the tendon is placed in the coalition site. The interphalangeal joint of the great toe is taken through a range of motion to assure that motion of the great toe is not restricted. If there is restricted motion, a longer split is created within the FHL tendon, and the interphalangeal joint is re-examined distally. If fat graft is used, the layer of the periosteum and FDL tendon sheath is repaired over the fat graft to secure it in place. If the FHL tendon is used for interposition, the periosteum of the talus is sutured to the periosteum from the sustentaculum to prevent displacement of the tendon. 
the tourniquet is released, and adequate hemostasis assured. The subcutaneous tissue is closed with absorbable sutures, and the skin with an absorbable subcuticular suture or non-absorbable nylon sutures. The extremity is placed in a short leg cast or split. If a cast is used, it may be univalved or bivalved. Post-operative care and expected outcomes. The patient remains non-weight bearing in the cast or splint for two to three weeks. Progressive weight bearing is allowed following cast removal. Exercises focus on active, active assisted, and passive range of motion of the subtalar joint. Greater than 85% of patients have good to excellent results. Poor results and persistent pain are more likely in coalitions constituting greater than 50% of the subtalar joint and in cases with concomitant severe hindfoot valgus complications. Failure to resect adequate bone. Injury to adjacent cartilage. Poor wound healing. Recurrence of the coalition. Thanks for watching my video. Do not forget to subscribe to my non-profit YouTube channel.